so if I go all the way back to the beginning, I was actually born in Jamaica, and I was born in a place called Clarendon Frankfield. And if you, go, if you went there today, you'd see quite a lot of subsistence farmers actually working the land. But um, you probably all know the history that in the 1950s, um, people like my parents had the opportunity to come to this country and we were brought up in one of those classic two up, two down terrace houses. Very, very urban concrete jungle. Now we were very, very poor and um, as a way of um, supplementing the family income, my father had an allotment and it was my responsibility as the oldest boy to look after this allotment. And I absolutely loved being on this allotment, loved it. I can remember I was 11 years old when I made myself a promise that one day I would like to own my own farm. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but it was a promise that I'd lodged into the back of my mind and then everything, everything that I subsequently did was to try and get into a position to own my own farm. But the first thing which I think is always key, especially in this country, is to have the courage to dream. Now we are quite cynical in Britain. And so when we tend to talk about dreams, people see that as being something quite airy-fairy. But the most important thing with anything that you want to do in life is to have the courage to dream. You need to have that dream as early as possible. I remember something that my father said to me, and I've tried to live my life on these principles, and I fundamentally believe in these principles. And he said this, you only actually need two things to achieve anything that you want in life. The first thing is that you have to have absolute focus. Anybody that achieves anything, be they a great athlete, be they a businessman, the one thing that they will have is absolute focus. The second thing, which is equally as important, is to have a positive attitude. Because if you have a positive attitude, things come your way. And what you need in life is that you need to find those people who are going to help you achieve your dreams. So I started off um, at the BBC as a runner. I then went on to be a researcher. From a researcher, I then went on to be a director and a producer. And I spent about 10 years in the BBC um, making um, documentaries. And, uh, and at the time, I was pretty well known for making food documentaries. So what was really interesting was that as much as I loved working in the BBC, Again, the promise that I made to myself about getting this farm was constantly nagging me and I knew I was running out of time. And um, what I sort of decided was because obviously I worked as a chef and then I made food programs, that what I wanted to do was to start up my own food and drink marketing advertising um, agency. Now, entrepreneurialism is always about sort of bringing about change. It's about having the courage to challenge the status quo. So whatever you go on to do, you shouldn't go on wanting just to copy what's round, is that you have to have a bit of attitude and always say, well, who says that has to be the way of doing it? You've got to challenge what's going on there now because that is what on, that's what's exciting and that's what entrepreneurialism is all about. Challenge it, don't accept it. I ran my business for 15 years and I learned in that time all about marketing and all about the importance of the consumer and then that gave me the money to buy my farm. Now it took me something like about 40 years to get in the position to buy my farm. So the quicker you start off on your journey to achieve what you want, the, the quicker you are going to achieve it, but it takes a long time with some sort of diversions. I saw an opportunity to, to, um, to develop a brand. Now all too often when people are going to do a, a food product, they would come up with an idea for a, a, a jar of sauce or a, or, or a jam. And the reason why they do that is because you have a long shelf life with a sauce or a jam. You have 18 months, two years. But I decided, actually, I wanted to have a, an immediate relationship with the consumer, and I wanted an everyday product. So that I decided I would do something which um, the consumers love, especially in Britain, which was a sausage. Because I'm from a marketing background, I spent a lot of time and a lot of money researching, researching, really understanding the consumer. So having done all of that, I then thought, well, um, what am I going to call this, this product, th these sausages? And then one day it came to me. All of my next door neighbours down in um, Devon used to call me the Black Farmer. You know, that's a pretty good brand name. 
Not only is it um, a really good brand name, but um, there's no one else out there that can nick the idea. But the key thing is that it's a brand that has jeopardy. And so when you're starting up anything, what you've got to try and ask yourself is where is the jeopardy in this? And the reason why you need jeopardy, because it's then going to start conversation. It's then going to bring about interest. It's then going to make people start asking, well, what is all this about? And any new venture has to start with that sort of word of mouth, this curiosity about what's going on here. Now, my brand has come about at the time with a great explosion of the internet and, and social networking. So Facebook and Twitter, we spend a massive amount of time and energy working those things. Because what, is, what, what you'll find as you go out there now is that the consumers demand a lot more interaction. They demand a lot more involvement. And the people who are good at that are the people who will go on to do well. And you should always remember that it doesn't matter how brilliant your product is, you could have the best farm, the best products, but if you don't know how to do marketing, you will never, ever succeed. And so the people who go on and do brilliantly are the ones who understand the importance of marketing. So as you decide what you're going to do, never, ever forget that. And great businesses, really, are businesses that catch what they call the zeitgeist. And I fundamentally believe that's down to people having relationships with real people. There's a real demand and need for it. So you're actually in a good place to be able to have that sort of relationship. Thank you very much for listening to me. And um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.